Today we will dissect together an example of a bony fish. First of all, let's talk about the general features of bony fish. Most bony fishes are characterized by a bony skeleton with many vertebrae. Bone has advantages over cartilage because it provides excellent support and effectively stores calcium. Most bony fishes are oviparous. Most species lay an impressive number of eggs and fertilize them externally. The ocean sunfish, for example, lay more than 300 million eggs. Firstly, we will talk about the external features. If we are looking for the fish, mm -hmm. we have a streamlined body that is very perfect for the swimming. Skin is moist and scaly. Those scales are protective. They may be also colored for better camouflaging and hiding from predators. If you are looking here for the body, the body is made up of three distinctive regions, head, trunk, tail, head region, trunk region, tail region. So, first of all, we have three body parts. In the beginning, we'll talk about the head region. If we are looking for the head region, there is the mouth. And if we are opening the mouth, we can find here and we can feel the teeth, which is very, very important for the fish in order to feed by them. And here we have the tongue and here we have the nostrils, the nostrils, and here we have the eye, of course the eye is covered with eyelids. Also, the eyelids such your glasses that you are wearing in order to swim in the water. Here we have the gill cover or it's known as an operculum. If we open it, we will find the gills underneath it. So, those are the external features of the head region. Again, we have the mouth, and here we have the tongue, teeth, and here we have the nostrils, eyes, and operculum or gill cover. In bony fish, the operculum is a protective flap of the body wall that covers the gill and here we will find the gills and the gills are being attached to a gill arc okay of course the gills when they are out of the water they are folded together when they are in the water we will do this example a couple of seconds we will find that they will be away from each other in order to provide a better gaseous exchange so this is the head region if we go for the trunk region, firstly we will find out the fins. Fins one of the most important things that characterizing the pony fish. This is the dorsal fin. Dorsal fin. It's made up of two extinct parts. Here we have the bony dorsal fin, which is made up of bone. They are very strong. They are stiff. This is the dorsal, or this is the, the bone dorsal fin. And in between them, in between each both bone dorsal fins, there is a soft dorsal fin. A, a, this is the soft dorsal fin. So, this is the dorsal fin. Here we have the pectoral fin and the pectoral region. This is the pectoral fin. Of course, it's paired. Because if I look in here, we have a pair of the pectoral fins, pair of, and this is in the pectoral region. And here we have the pelvic fins, a pair of pelvic fin, okay, and it's in the pelvic, in the pelvis uh, bone. And here we have anal fin, this is the anal fin, okay, right after the anus. And eventually we have the caudal fin, caudal or tail fin. So again, we have here the dorsal fin. Dorsal fin has 
a, a bone dorsal fin and in between there is soft dorsal fin and here we have the pectoral fin on the pectoral bone here and here we have the pelvis fin and here we have the anal fin and eventually the body has the caudal or tail fin on the tail region so this is the uh, dorsal pectoral Vin, uh, the pectoral, uh, pelvic, pelvic, and anal and caudal fins. Those are the uh, the fins. Okay. Now, if we are looking for what is the importance of the dorsal, the uh, pelv uh, pectoral and pelvic fins, the most important of them is to assist in the turning movement and reduce the rolling over of the fish, the upbalance in the fish. Okay. And the caudal fin, of course, propels the fish throw the water, propel the fish through the, the water. So this is the external features of the, uh, of the fish. But there is one of the most important things, which is the lateral sensory line. This is the lateral sensory line, one of the most important things. It is a sensitive, in order to, uh, it's a sensitive to vibrations in the water. Actually, it's a groove along each side of the body with many tiny openings to the outside it's made up of sensory cells that are found in the lateral line organ detecting the vibration that are caused by waves and other movement in the water including movements by predators or even their breeze so it is very important and this is the external feature of the tilabia which is an example of the bony fish the general viscera firstly let's go for the dissection of the uh, head if I'm moving the flap like this we will move the flap This is the operculum or the gill cover removed and now this is the gill arcs on which the gills are being attached. We will remove it. And those are the gills. Those are the gills. Of course, if we place them in the water, they will be, as you will see here, once we put them in the water, yes, now they become much more away from each other in order to provide a better surface area for the process of gaseous exchange. Okay. Firstly, I remove the operculum. This is the operculum. Those are the gills. The gills are attached into the gill arc. I remove it. But firstly, if you are looking here, the water comes through the mouth and from the mouth they are go through the gills so the process of gas exchange occurred here so you will remove the gills so the gills are removed fully from the side and if you are opening the fish this is the anus opening Okay, then we go from the anus and we will be careful not to go through the, yes, this is the pelvic bone, 
need a stronger scissor. So if we are even going farther, we will find here that we have the we have the mouth. After the mouth, then we have the pharynx. After the pharynx, there is the esophagus, which is leading to the uh, stomach. Surely here we have the this is this is the liver. Yes, this is the liver. Okay, and if I exceeded the uh, area in order to make it much more clearer, now it is much more obvious. Okay, yeah, this is the liver, and here we have the stomach. After the stomach, there are the uh, intestine. Those are the intestine, and eventually the intestine opening in the cloaca. Okay, and regarding the cloaca, we have here a very important thing to be mentioned in the digestive tract generally. Here we have firstly the mouth, mouth opening the pharynx, for pharynx opening the esophagus, then the esophagus open in the yes, as you can look here, open in intestine. Those are the intestine, eventually, they are open in the cloaca. Okay, what is cloaca? That's very important. Of course, cloaca open to the outside. Okay, the cloaca receive digestive wastes as well as the metabolic waste from the urinary system. Here, there is the uh, in the back here. If you are opening this, there is the urinary system. But firstly, I remove it in order to have a better uh, view. So here we have, this is the, yeah, this is one of the most important things, which is the um, bladder or the swimming bladder. And we have to talk about this. And now I'm, I'm, by accident, I, um, yes, I cut it. The swim bladder uh, is the same as the life vest that makes you buoyant. It is an air sac that helps regulate the buoyancy. It is considered a hydrostatic organ that enable the fish to change the density of its body and remain stationary at a given depth. They, uh, they can control the amount, they can control the amount of gas in the swim bladder and even they can change the overall density of its body without the swim bladder, the fish of course will, will sink. If you are proceeding here, we will find that this is the skeleton, this is the backbone I can make it much farther to make it much more clearer. Yes, this is the backbone. Okay. And here, the kidneys are there. And the ureter is supposed to be moving here in the back. And there is the uh, urinary bladder. And um, the kidney opens to the uh, two ureters. Ureter received to the urinary bladder. And urinary bladder, okay joining and drainage discharging its content into the colloquial opening one of the most important things here is the gonads yeah the gonads gonads they are here and this is a female and those are the eggs that are inside the female of course those eggs are being uh, externally fertilized okay then they will uh, grow and hatch outside of the bodies. This is the female ovary that contains huge number of eggs. Okay, so just a summary. We have head, trunk, tail. The head is made up of mouth, nostril, eye and the operculum. And then we have the trunk region at which there is the dorsal fin that is made up of bony dorsal fin and soft dorsal fin here supposed to have the pectoral it was removed this was the uh, pectoral and this is the pelvic fins it's a pair of and here we have a, a um, anal fin and then we have the caudal fin 
that play a very important role in propelling the fish throughout the water. Regarding the internal viscera, after the mouth it's open in the esophagus, I mean in the pharynx. After the pharynx we have the esophagus. After the esophagus there is the stomach, yes, here. After the stomach there is the intestine, those are the intestine. Those intestine eventually will open in the cloaca and here is the cloaca. The most important thing for the cloaca is it receives the digestive waste product along with the yes along with the metabolic waste from the urinary system and both of both together will be excreted to the outside of the uh, fish through the anal opening and this is the general viscera of the general viscera of the uh, tilabia which is an example of bony fish <laughs>